I'm gonna be heading outside in just a couple minutes. It's really, really cold outside, so I gotta make sure that my hands stay nice and warm. Uh, but today's video is actually sponsored by Backcountry. Backcountry, thank you guys so much for sponsoring today's video. And um, I'm gonna be making sure that I stay nice and warm. I've got gear, ultralight gear I'm gonna set up because I'm gonna be setting up some gear that's gonna require my fingers and being able to uh, stay warm and being able to handle gear outside that isn't gonna be, uh, you know, causing my hands to fall off. You're supposed to shake these. So one of the coolest things about backcountry is that they love to connect the everyday person with the outdoors. It's a lot like how my channel is right now and you can get pretty much anything you want for your backpacking experience from backcountry. They've even got what they call gearheads. They're basically people that are available by chat, email, or phone that pretty much know anything and everything you can think about when it comes to gear and outdoor stuff. These guys are former Olympians, they're former athletes, they're guides, so they really, really know their stuff. So if like you're going on a trip and you're not exactly sure about a piece of gear or how it's used or if the fabric or anything about it at all, they're definitely able to help you guys out. I've got three new pieces of gear to show you. All three are completely ultralight and three season gear. <laughs> it's winter outside, but I thought I would use this as an opportunity to show you that you can use some three season gear out in the winter time. Uh, some of this gear I wouldn't use, but one piece I definitely could use if I wanted to. Oh, and by the way, if you do decide to purchase at Backcountry, make sure you use coupon code DAN15 for 15% off of your order. Some exclusions do apply, but I'll put links to all of the gear that I'm gonna talk about today in the description below. Out of the three pieces of gear, I'm gonna talk about the one I'm the most excited about first. <laughs> I wanna talk about that. I just need to get this off my chest. Plus I need to set it up in order to use some of the other gear. But um, it, you guys know that I'm you know, doing YouTube on a full-time basis now and uh, that's causing me to carry more stuff like camera gear and that kind of thing. And I'm trying to up some quality. So my gear is getting a lot heavier and I was trying to think of ways to um, lower weight in other areas and uh, what I ended up doing is I bought a brand new three season tent I'm trying out um, as far as I am aware this is the lightest single wall two-person tent on the market um, correct me if I'm wrong if you guys know of something else please let me know but this weighs one pound with the stuff stack the stakes everything included um, but on my scale it actually weighed 15.7 ounces it is the Big Agnes Scout 2 Carbon Tent. This is a Dyneema tent. Uh, and Big Agnes is extremely specific about the type of person that this is for. This is not for like um, somebody who doesn't know how to use a tent uh, often or anything like that at all. This is something you really gotta take care of because uh, the Dyneema is really, really thin. I know you guys wanna see it. I'm gonna get this thing set up. We'll check it out, we'll get inside of it, and then uh, we'll kinda walk through some of the details. Okay, so I got it all set up and a huge disclaimer again, this is not a winter tent at all. It's not supposed to be set up in the snow, but I couldn't wait to show you guys. I couldn't wait to get a video out on this. I'm so excited. This is the Big Agnes Scout 2 carbon tent, all set up in the snow. Here we go. So this tent requires two trekking poles to set it up, and it is not a freestanding tent, and it's a single wall tent. Basically what that means is um, you're only gonna wanna use this tent if you are an advanced tent user. Uh, in the winter time, you would definitely get a ton of condensation on the inside because it doesn't have the double wall or the net inside of it to uh, separate itself from the outer wall. And a non-freestanding tent means that it's gotta be staked out. It doesn't have poles to hold itself up. So, um, but I'll tell you what, for the weight and for the space on the inside of the tent, I I'm, I'm stoked. I, I wanna show you the inside. Okay, so it's a front entry tent, which means that it's got one doorway right here. And that can just roll back right out of your way. Um, there's no vestibule, so all your gear has to go with you inside, but because it's a two-person tent, your uh, gear should easily fit inside with you, and you'd obviously go hang your food somewhere anyway, so I don't really think that's gonna be an issue. <laughs> Getting inside the tent is really easy. Um, you would think that a trekking pole being in the way would be an issue, it's really not at all. Um, but that's a 24 millimeter lens on this camera, so uh, it's not really a super wide angle lens, so it really is this roomy in here. There's plenty of room for you and your gear. Now, if you're gonna fit two people in here, I would say it's gonna get pretty tight, especially for a single wall tent. Uh, that would mean that people would be rubbing up against the walls. And with condensation on the walls, 
you don't want to be doing that. So I would say this is just a glorified one person tent. And the sides have these big open, uh, they call them pockets. I really wouldn't put too much gear in there. I don't think you need to, but there's a lot of mesh here for tons of ventilation. On the back wall, you can see that there's uh, plenty of ventilation to come in as well. So the walls are extremely thin. You're gonna to wanna to be very, very careful with it. I think this is like a 0.34 Dyneema. The floor, I believe, is a 0.51 Dyneema, which pretty much means that uh, it's paper thin. It is strong, but it's not tear resistant for sure. So if you got sharp objects in here or anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to keep it away from the walls of the tent. That's why they say it's for more of an advanced user. And also, you can see it's almost see-through. Like you can pretty much see the trees outside. So there is some privacy having it be a little bit, uh, you know, faded like this. But if you're gonna be camping with other people and you don't want them to see inside the tent, uh, please make sure that you understand that this is a thin, thin, almost see-through tent. Other than that, it's fantastic. Why don't we show you the other two pieces of gear I'm super excited about because I already saved a pound and a half <laughs> going with this tent uh, for some of my three season stuff. So maybe you notice it, but gear piece number two is something that was already in the tent here. Um, it is a new sleeping pad for the summer. And the only reason that I got this sleeping pad is because uh, it's a 25 inch wide sleeping pad and it's big warmer brother uh, was actually pretty comfortable this winter. So I opted for the Neo Air Thermarest Uberlite in the large version, which is I think 76 by 25. Now the R value on this is pretty low. You definitely don't want to use this in the winter as well. It's a three season pad, but it is uh, definitely a couple inches thick. And um, having it out already and laying on it, I can tell you it is pretty comfortable. It's about as noisy as my Nemo Tensor. So I'm not really worried about that at all. I am excited to lose about eight ounces uh, out of my sleeping pad. That will be cool. And again, this is really all just to make sure that I've got um, some weight savings so I can bring the camera gear that I want to bring out on the trail. So really excited about that piece of gear. I think we should talk about gear piece number three. All right, so gear piece number three is this jacket right here. This is the Arcturix Cerium SL, which stands for super light, and it is super light. As far as I know, this is the lightest weight, full featured down jacket on the market. And full featured means that it has pockets and it's pretty much a regular jacket. The previous king was the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer, but I think the Ghost Whisperer 2 is out now, and I've heard that the material's a little bit different, and it's actually heavier, which is kind of strange, but this is made with 850 fill down power, and it also has strategically placed synthetic insulation, like in the cuffs, around the mouth, on the shoulders, places that would be prone to more moisture. This thing weighs seven ounces. The big difference between this and my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper is that the Ghost Whisper has a hood and this doesn't, but that's not a big deal because I'll be taking my buff with me. I can use that like a beanie and I've also got uh, a down uh, hat that I've got from UGQ, so not a big deal at all. Anyway, pretty stoked about this jacket. This was a fun purchase for me. It's black. I'm into black lately, if you can't tell. So those are my three super majorly ultralight upgrades <laughs> for 2020. Can't wait to try them out this season. If you guys like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more and hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every single time it's released. And I will see you on the next one.